Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to build a guessing game in C Sharp. Now, this is going to be a very basic guessing game. Essentially, we're going to define a secret word, and then the user is going to have to try and guess that word. And we're going to keep asking the user to try and guess it until they get it right. So this is going to be kind of cool. And I'm going to show you guys how we can use uh, some of the stuff that we've learned in this course so far, things like loops and uh, if statements and variables. We're going to use all of them together to create this cool game. So let's start creating the game. Um, remember, this is going to be a guessing game. So the first thing we want to do is come up with a word that the user is going to have to guess. So I'm going to create a variable and it's just going to be a string and I'm just going to call it secret word. And the secret word, why don't we just give it a value? We'll set it equal to draft. So draft is going to be the secret word. And the user's goal for our game is going to be to try and guess that secret word. Now, I want to create one more variable. And we're actually going to call this one uh, guess. So this is going to be another string. And I'm just going to say it's called guess. And why don't we just set it equal to this empty string over here? So I'm not really um, giving this a value yet. All right, so now we have our secret word and we also have our guess. And what I want to do is I want to be able to keep prompting the user to guess the word until they get it correctly. So anytime in C sharp that we want to keep doing something repeatedly until a certain condition is false, we're going to use a while loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create a while loop and I'm just going to make an open and close parentheses, open and close curly bracket. And there's really two things to this while loop. The first thing is going to be a condition. And the second thing is going to be the code that we want to continually execute. So let's think this through. What condition do we want to put up here? Well, basically, we want to keep looping while the guess is not equal to the secret word. In other words, as long as the guess that the user guesses isn't equal to what the secret word is, we want to keep looping and keep asking them to guess. So down here, what I want to do is keep prompting them to guess. Um, so I'm basically just going to say console dot write and I'll write out to the screen a prompt. I'll say enter guess. And then now that we've prompted them to enter the guess, what I want to do is I want to take whatever they entered, store it inside of this guess variable. And that way we can keep checking it every time we go through this loop. So down here, I'm basically just going to say guess is equal to console dot read line. So I'm going to go ahead and read the line of text that the user enters, basically just read whatever word they entered in and store it inside of this guess variable. So essentially what's happening now is every time we go through the loop, we're prompting the user to guess the word and we're storing whatever they guess inside of this guess variable. Then we're going to go up here and we're going to check to see if it's equal to the secret word. If it's not equal to the secret word, then we're going to go through and ask them again. But if it is equal to the secret word, then we're going to go ahead and break out of the loop. And then down here, we can just print out a success message. So I can just print out console.write and I'll just print out you win. So this is our program. It's actually a pretty um, easy program. And I do just want to point out that in, in addition to using a while loop, we also could have used a do while loop in order to write this program. Um, so if you want a little challenge and you want to try and challenge yourself, go ahead and try to write this with a do while loop instead of a while loop. And if you need to figure out what do while loops are, just check out the previous tutorial. I explained what they were. But for our case, I'm just doing it with a simple while loop just to keep it as straightforward as possible. But like I said, if you want a challenge, try it with a do while loop. So let's see if we can run our program. Believe it or not, this is actually all the code that we need for this guessing game. So I'm going to go ahead and run the program. Now you'll see over here it says enter guess. So I'm just going to type in some random text. And you'll notice that because this text didn't match the secret word draft, it's asking me to enter again. So I'm going to keep entering and I could keep entering essentially infinitely many times. And it's going to keep prompting me to, to guess until I get the word. But if I was to type in the secret word, so if I was to type in draft here, now when I hit enter, draft is equal to the secret word. So we're going to break out of that while loop and we're going to get this you win message. So that's essentially all our game did. It allowed us to keep guessing the word until we got it right. So this is a pretty cool game. And you know, you guys can see down here is actually pretty easy for us to implement it. It was only, you know, maybe like seven or eight lines of code. But I think there's a little problem with this game. And the problem is that the user gets unlimited guesses, 
right? So the user can just keep guessing infinitely. I mean, technically they, technically they could type in, you know, every possible combination of letters until they got the secret word right. And that's not a very good game. I think what would make this game better would be imposing a guess limit. So we could say like the user can only guess three times or they can only guess four times. And if they don't get it in four guesses, then they lose the game. I think that would be a little bit better game. So why don't we try to implement that? Let's see if we can come up with some code that will allow us to program that game. Well, I think I know what we need to do. So the first thing we wanna do is we need some way to keep track of how many times the user guesses, right? If we're gonna impose a guess limit on this game, we need to be able to keep track of how many times they've guessed. So that was a good place to start. Why don't we just start with that? I'm gonna create an integer and I'm just gonna call it guess count and we'll set it equal to zero initially, right? Because initially the user hasn't guessed at all. And what we want to do is we want to increment this variable every time the user guesses. So let's go down here and you'll notice this is the code down here that allows the user to guess, right? It's this code, which is essentially prompting the user to guess and then storing their guess. So in addition to prompting them and storing the guess, we can also increment the guess count. So I can come down here and I can say guess count plus plus, right? Just like that. So I'm incrementing the guess count every single time they guess. Awesome. But we're still gonna need some more information. So another piece of information we're gonna need is the guess limit. So we need to essentially tell our program how many times the user can guess. So I'm just gonna make another int and I'll just call this guess limit. And over here we can define how many times we want the user to be able to guess. Well, why don't we say three guesses? I think three guesses is enough. Um, three strikes and you're out. And so now we're basically limiting the user to three guesses. I also want to create one more variable and this is going to be a Boolean and this is going to be called out of guesses. And I'm going to set this equal to false. And this Boolean is basically going to tell us whether or not the user is out of guesses. So if the user still has guesses left, this is going to be equal to false. But if the user is out of guesses, then this is going to be equal to true. So we're going to set it to false initially. And then down here, we need to use these two new variables inside of this while loop. So the first thing I think we should do is we should only allow the user to guess when they still have guesses left, right? In other words, I only want the user to be able to guess the word if they haven't already guessed three times, right? If they haven't guessed the guess limit. So what we can do is we could actually create an if statement. So I can say if, and down here, I'm gonna make open and close curly brackets. And inside of these parentheses, I need to put a condition. So let's think about this. What do we wanna check? Well, I wanna to check to see if the user's out of guesses, right? So I can check to see if the guess count is less than the guess limit. And if this is true, in other words, if the guess count is less than the guess limit, then the user still has a guess left so they can go ahead and guess. So I'm gonna take all this code for guessing and I'm gonna put it inside of these curly brackets, right? So once again, we're checking this condition. If the guess count is less than the guess limit, then we're gonna go ahead and print out all of this stuff. So we're gonna allow them to guess the word and then we'll increment the guess count. But if this isn't the case, in other words, if guess count isn't less than the guess limit, that means that they've already reached their guess limit, right? That means they don't have any guesses left. So I can say else down here. And if they run out of guesses, what I want to do is I want to modify this out of guesses variable. So when they run out of guesses, in other words, when this condition is false, I want to say out of guesses is equal to true. So I'm going to say out of guesses is equal to true. So basically what we're doing down here is we're saying, hey, they're out of guesses. And this is actually what we would call like a flag. So you'll hear people sometimes call these like Boolean flags. And this is basically just a value that's giving us a piece of information, right? This is telling us that the user's out of guesses. So there's one more thing we have to do in this while loop. You'll notice that this while loop is gonna keep executing as long as the guess is not equal to the secret word. But now, since we're adding in the guess limit, there's actually another situation where we're gonna to wanna to stop looping. And that situation is when the user is out of guesses. So I wanna modify this. I wanna say that we wanna keep guessing while they haven't guessed the secret word and they're not out of guesses, right? Because if they haven't guessed the secret word, then we wanna keep asking them. But 
if they ran out of guesses, then we want to break out of the loop, right? So I'm going to keep looping while the guess is not equal to the secret word and the user is not out of guesses. So now we have a while loop set up, which is going to allow us to specify a guess limit. So there's one more thing we have to do, which is down here. Now down here, we're basically just saying you win, right? So whenever we break out of the loop, we're telling them that they won. Here's the problem though. So there's two situations now where they could break out of the loop when the guess is equal to the secret word. In other words, when they guess correctly, but there's also another situation, which is when they're run out of guesses, right? And so down here, we're not going to be super sure which situation occurred. So what we can do is we can use another if statement and we can check. So I can basically say if, and I can check to see if they're out of guesses. So I can say if out of guesses, if this is true, then I want to print out a lose message. So I'm basically just going to say you lose. But otherwise, if it's not true, that means that they guess the word correctly. So we can go ahead and put this win message down here. All right, so that is essentially everything we need to do to specify the guess limit. I know this was a lot of code. Why don't we run our program? We'll play the game, make sure we got everything right, and then we can come back and we can kind of go over what we did again. So I'm gonna run the program. It says enter guess. So I'm gonna go ahead and lose the game. So remember, we have three guesses. So I can just type in some random guess, another one. Now we're on our third and final guess. If I don't get the word this time, we're gonna lose. So I'm not gonna get it and I'm gonna click enter and it says you lose. So it was able to figure out that we didn't guess the secret word in three tries and it told us that we lost the game, cool. So now let's see if we can win the game. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this program and it's gonna say enter guess. So let's enter two wrong guesses. Now we're on our last try. Uh, let's say I have a stroke of genius and I type in the right word and it says you win. So the program is now smart enough to um, play this game with a guess limit. Let's go over one more time what we did. We created a bunch of variables up here. The secret word is pretty obvious. The guess is just storing what they guessed. The guess count is keeping track of how many times the users guessed, right? So every time we run the code to allow them to guess the word, we're gonna increment it. The guess limit is just telling us how many times they can guess. And this out of guesses variable is basically gonna tell us whether or not the user has run out of guesses. So down here we have our loop. And this loop is basically just gonna keep going and keep asking the user to guess the word. And it's gonna keep doing that as long as the guess is not equal to the secret word and as long as the user is not out of guesses. So if either of those conditions is false, we're gonna break out of the loop. The first thing we do in the loop is we basically use this if statement and we say if guess count is less than guess limit. And so if the guess count is less than the guess limit, in other words, if they haven't um, guessed three times in our case, then we're gonna prompt them for another guess. But if they have guessed three times, then we're gonna set this out of guesses variable equal to true, and that's gonna trigger us breaking out of the loop. So if we do break out of the loop, there's two situations, right? The first situation is that we won the game and we guessed the secret word correctly, but the other is that we ran out of guesses. So down here, I'm basically checking that. I'm checking if we're out of guesses. If we are, that means we lost. Otherwise, that means we won. And so that's the basics of building this program. And I do just wanna say, um, this while loop up here, we used a simple while loop to do this, but you could also run this program using a do while loop. And so if you want to challenge, if you really understand what's going on here and you, you know, you're pretty solid on what's going on, a good challenge would be to try and build this program with a do while loop instead of a while loop. Um, it's going to be pretty similar. A lot of the code can stay the same, but there are going to be some key differences that you're going to have to try to account for. So if you're looking for a challenge, try to build this with a do while loop. But otherwise, that's sort of how you build the guessing game. And you know, in this tutorial, we were able to integrate a lot of the stuff that we've learned up to this point in the course, like variables. We used all different types of variables. We used the loops. We also used if statements. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how you could build something like this using all that stuff. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.